guys and welcome to this new video my first video of 2022 it is freezing out and i'm sitting here with a cup of tea because today i'm going to be talking about all the books i read in the month of january in the month of january i read slash listened to seven books honestly that is great for me <laughs> um audiobooks really helped it this month and i have my notes right here so if you see me looking down i'm looking at my laptop but i listened to three audiobooks which is really good i really love audiobooks i love my libby app which is where i get audiobooks from my library i also had one dnf this month i just couldn't do it but let's just go through all the books that i read this month so the first book that i read actually started it in december and then sort of finished it in january but that book is this time next year by sophie cousins this was actually my dnf so i did not like this book at all i i thought the plot was really good and i thought the characters were cute i just it felt like there was too much like added extra in each chapter i felt like it it was just over explaining certain things that i didn't really care about it didn't like get to the point of the book <laughs> quick enough for me and i ended up dnfing it about halfway through i have the actual book i just i don't have it with me because i put it in my car with my little free library book pile i guess that i have in my car or in case i like happen to drive by one and i need a book so i <laughs> keep that in my car but i put that book in the pile because i didn't like it yeah we didn't start off the year of reading that great oh i just realized i did not explain this time next year so <laughs> this time next year is about um this girl and this guy and they are both born on january 1st like at midnight he is like a minute older and basically she is just very unlucky in life and he seems to have it all and it's this story of them coming together yeah it's like a hate to love type of book uh the plot really really cute and very intriguing but the actual like writing not my jam so the next book i actually listened to it on audiobook and it is station 11 by emily st john michael and this book was really interesting to read just because it's about and, and this was published in 2014 so it's kind of trippy but this book is basically about uh three storylines um and three perspectives so we have the perspective of an actor and his is kind of like from the past um and then you have this guy and his is in the future and then you have this girl and hers is in the present and so basically it starts off with the actor dying on stage while he's performing and then this pandemic hits and you know it's like fast forward to years in the future when basically the entire country it, it takes it mostly takes place around the great lakes so like canada um northern united states area and basically it's like dystopian like land and this flu just obliterated <laughs> the country and so it's really trippy to read about that while we are in a pandemic yeah some things just hit like a little too home um but the story was fine uh i forget what i rated it but i i, I think it, it's like a solid like three star it wasn't amazing and it wasn't like terrible i enjoyed my time listening to it but i don't know it was just some things i just didn't care about and i think that's just a me thing but like some parts of the story like i really didn't care for the actor's point of view i felt more interested in the girl and the guy um they're not like in a relationship or anything but like their stories do intertwine um but i just i don't know it's also a tv show on i think hbo max it's a tv series on hbo max i've only seen the first episode but I need to get back into that and see i started that i started it the day i finished the book so need to get back into that and see how it compares but so far the first episode is pretty pretty good compared to the book but yeah it is really trippy to read something like this while we are in a pandemic i haven't really read many books about like a pandemic especially now especially in the past two years so the next book is actually another audiobook and I listened to Survive the Night by Riley Sager. This book is about this girl and her college roommate was murdered and she is just taking it really hard mentally. She's not in a good base and so she is basically leaving college to go back home 
home to i think ohio i think her college is in new jersey and then she's going back to ohio if i remember correctly but basically she has to drive like hours to get home and so so she found this guy in like this rideshare program at her school and he is giving her a ride home and this takes place over like one night um there are like flashbacks and things like that but yeah the main character one i get that people while they're going through like trauma or something traumatic they're not all there in the mind i get that but some of the things that this character did were just very questionable the way she acted something she did like first of all if you know there's a campus killer on the loose why would you get in a car with some random guy that you don't know for starters just and that's not giving away anything that's literally in the like premise of the book yeah so she kind of pissed me off a little bit but other than that i think the story it was it was engaging I, it was a thriller so like it kept me on my toes and the twist at the end i honestly did not see coming so that gave it like a few points but yeah i have read one other riley Sager book I, I honestly can't remember much about that book i read it so long ago but i definitely would like to pick up more of his books in the future this did not stop me from not like reading his books so the next audiobook i listened to yeah i did like i was like knocking them out with these audiobooks they have definitely been really really great for like getting more books in and also when i can't get a physical book at the library i like to try and get it as an audiobook from my library. I read The Family by Naomi Kropitsky. Kropitsky? Kropitsky. There we go. And this is kind of a mafia story and it follows these two girls, you know, are growing up and kind of marry into a mob family. It's set in Brooklyn, which is where my family's from. I'm Italian and so this this story, like, I, I just wanted to read it just because I am Italian, my family's from Brooklyn, and no, we are not, like, part of the mob. I don't have anyone in my family who is a mobster or was in the mob, but just the whole idea of like family and you know italian heritage it just well, intrigued me i will say there were certain things in this book that i thought were correct and relatable about an italian family there were certain things when it came to sort of the like mob aspects of it that i didn't find that realistic and i don't want to like talk to a lot of it just because i don't want to give away any spoilers but i thought the book was good it, if you like um mob stories this isn't very like action based it's more family based and how it affects the children and then like the wives as these girls grow up and it also speaks to like friendship and things like that but but yeah i, I thought it was it wasn't as exciting as i expected it to be and but i love me a good book with some italian family representation so i always like try to read those kinds of books and yeah this one was a little bit disappointing so while i was listening to all of those books i was actually reading ugly love by colleen hoover and my friends and i read this for our book club and this book was between like a good and an all right i gave it a three stars but i, I think it's more like three and a half um, in my opinion, I love Colleen Hoover's writing. I think she is a great writer and I'm excited to pick up more of her books. But this story to me, I just felt like it had too many like plots. Like the main characters I think went like through and Miles in particular. So this book, so I'm getting ahead of myself. So this book follows two characters and two points of views. So we have the point of view of Tate and she is moving in with her brother because she's going to school up um, from San Diego to San Francisco. And he has a best friend named Miles and that's the other point of view that we get. And so Miles, we get kind of a past point of view from him. So when it starts off, Tate is in the present, Miles is in the past, and you learn through his story why he is the way he is and why he acts and does certain things that he does. And basically, they just kind of fall for each other in a way, and they decide to be friends with benefits. And of course, one gets a little too attached, and one does not want to get attached and fight it. So it's, yeah, friends with benefits, kind of storyline but i was a little more intrigued with miles's story rather than tate's i think this book could have been like three other books like th the, the amount of storylines and like traumas that these characters went through well, mostly miles i feel like they could have been their own stories i feel like she just took a bunch of like plots of books and just threw it all into one and i was just a little more intrigued in miles's story and would have rather read a book just about him 
and not have Tate there and it would have had a different ending but I mean it was good it didn't like stop me from wanting to pick up other Colleen Hoover books I thought this book was fine I didn't love it I didn't hate it it was like meh for me but I know a lot of people love Colleen Hoover and I'm excited to check out more of her books uh yeah that's how I felt about this one. So the next book that I read in the month of January was The Soulmate Equation by Christina Lauren. I love this book. I love this book so much. Christina Lauren, they are like my favorite authors of all time. And this I think is, I think this is now in like my top three of their books. I just, anything they write, I will read it. I love it. This one is definitely like 10 out of 10 would recommend so this book follows these two people so we have jess and river and river is a scientist and he and um some of his colleagues they came up with this like new dating app where you send in your dna and they find your perfect match through your dna jess is a single mom and she and her friend fizzy who is an amazing character and i love her so much she's hilarious but they um end up talking to river and they get these dna kits and so they send them in and jess like just forgets about it she literally sends it in and doesn't want to think about it ever again doesn't think she'll get a match and it turns out she got a diamond match the highest match Ever that this company has gotten with River and so there's some fake dating in here there's some great romance in here it's just all their books are perfect every single book that Christina Lauren writes each character is so different I, I like I just each book is so different from the others but yet they all have the same touch of like magic like I don't know what's in these books but I love every single one of them and I just this book was so amazing. This is my favorite book by them still is The Unhoneymooners, but this one, this one is up there. I think this might be my second favorite book by them. And then the last book that I listened to, another audiobook this month, is Educated by Tara Westover. So this is pretty much a memoir, nonfiction book by Tara Westover. It's about her growing up. This book was okay for me. I don't like, <laughs> like, I know it's a memoir and it's her life so like how could you really judge or rate her life it just it's not like a fiction book where you can find flaws in things like this is someone's actual life but i did have some like things about this book i think the message is great it's just all about her growing up in this kind of it's it like reminds me of like cult like extreme christianity end of the world type of family and everything is like off grid no doctors like they are homeschooled they don't try not to rely on the government like her dad is very toxic um just all of that and <laughs> just literally sounds like a cult which you know how she grew up and so this book is just about tara and some of her siblings who grew you know grew up in this environment and then ended up getting educated and being able to leave and live a better life um in their opinion i'm not saying one is better than the other i have some opinions on that but yeah so i think the message is great that like you know you shouldn't take your education for granted and that education is important yeah it made me grateful for you know being able to like not have to think about getting an education and you know that was never something i ever had to think of like i was always gonna get an education but i did kind of dig into the story a little more and i did find out that her mom has a book um as well with like her side of the story this like this book both of the books i didn't read the mom's book only educated but to me it just sounded like a very like he said she said kind of story i felt like i had to take what i was like reading or listening to with a grain of salt just because it's like i wasn't there in those situations i mean i will say like some parts of this book were hard to read like one of her brothers in particular is very abusive physically physically and mentally her dad is very mentally um, abusive that was really hard to read and i'm not saying i don't believe that part of it but just like the way some things were written um i read a review of like a blog post about both books of someone who actually lives in the area and they have like tara's family and this blog posters family like they have like people in common like friends and stuff in common and just reading what she had to say i don't know it just made me like rethink my ideas of this story not necessarily not believe the author but just like kind of take it with a grain of salt because it does sound a lot of, a lot like like a he said she said kind of thing so i gave this three stars i think the message was great but it didn't live up to like 
what I thought it was gonna be. But those are all of the seven books I read in the month of January. It, I definitely, those audiobooks really helped get like my <laughs> reading up in uh, the month. Didn't have as much time as I wanted to to read physical books, but I'm just, I'm happy with my reading in the month of January and I am definitely trying to keep it up in the month of February. My goal is to read 52 books this year. Last year I read 42, this year my goal 52, so like one for each week. So far I think I'm doing pretty good, I just have to keep it up, but yeah, that's about it for this video. Uh, let me know down below in the comments if you read a lot this month or if you read anything this month and what your favorite book was that you read. Please give this a big thumbs up if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're not already, and I will see you guys in my next video. Oh,